My, would you look at the heart on that woman. Whoo! Boy, I just saw the prettiest thing walk by. I want to tell you, boy, if it wasn't a wise woman. And yes, I could be talking about my wife. <laughs> well, you might think this is a funny way to start this meditation on Proverbs chapter 8. But the truth is, that's kind of what's going on here in this chapter. This Proverbs is a wonderful contrast to the adulterous woman found in chapter 7. In chapter 7, the adulterous woman came out in the dark of night and prostituted herself as she tried to seduce us to follow her foolish ways, ways that lead to a life of destruction and death. But here in chapter 8, wisdom is also calling out to us to pay attention to her real beauty as she describes all that she has to offer us. It says here that her grace adorns the thrones of kings and princes. Her beauty and majesty is on display, even in the creation of the world. The riches she has to offer are unsurpassed and unmatched by those who would discover them. Boy, she is a sight to behold, this woman of wisdom. And above all, to follow her lead leads us to life. That's why this chapter will end in verse 35 and 36 by stating that there is a stark contrast and a clear choice between these two women. Speaking of Lady Wisdom, verse 35 reads, For those who find me find life and receive favor from the Lord. But those who fail to find me harm themselves. All who hate me love death. So who would give up Lady Wisdom for this adulterous woman? The question I must pose to you today is this. Who is catching your eye? Have you seen what beauty resides in the wisdom of God? Over in the book of Ephesians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul says this about the wisdom of God. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things, his intent was that now through the church the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. This thought then leads Paul into this prayer, and I want this to be our prayer today. He writes, For this reason I kneel before the Lord, the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. He says, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp just how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine, according to his power that is worked within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen.